Hi guys this is Hirasaki. This story is all about what if Naruto was born a low-class devil before the Great Devil War. Realizing how the devil class system subjugated devils of lower class, Naruto will represent his origins as he rises and expose the corrupted system that he lives in, and he'll do it without the high-class devils even realizing it. Before we start kindly like and subscribe to this channel, and look over the description box for the author of this amazing storyline. Welcome aboard. Chapter 1, Prologue. Post-Devil Civil War. Bail Clan Territory. Low-Class Devil Holdings. The Bail Clan, the highest-ranking devil clan in the underworld, holds the title of Great King of the Underworld. The Bail Clan is a prideful group of devils, believing that power was everything, and how it should be used to rank others. Lord Bale, the leader of the Bale clan, controls his family with an iron fist, not allowing any of side branches of the clan prosper over the main branch. The headstrong man sowed his beliefs into his followers, and they were punished if they didn't agree with his method of rank. Now, in a small house in the Bale territory holds a family. Inside one of the many rooms sleeps our hero. Introducing Naruto Bale, a low-class, pure-blood devil son of Minato Bale and Kushina Bale. Suddenly, a ringing alarm floods the room. Beep beep asterisk beep asterisk b. Slamming his hand down on the alarm, a grumpy young Naruto slowly pulls himself from under the covers, revealing his face. Naruto, Naruto squinted his eyes as he yawned while running his hands through his blonde spiky hair that covered his head. He opened his to show the world his marvelous blue eyes, a feature he received from his father. He got up from his bed, showing he was only wearing blue gym shorts for pajamas, and walked to his mirror and grabbed his comb. Childishly, young Naruto tried to comb through his unkempt hair, but failed to do so. Damn it. Stupid hair. He whispered to himself as he threw his comb back down on his dresser. After taking a quick trip to the bathroom to brush his teeth, Naruto happily headed to the kitchen where he sees his father, Minato Bale, reading a newspaper while drinking coffee. Morning, Dad. Naruto exclaimed as he jumped at his father, who almost dropped his coffee onto his son. Naruto. He yelled as caught his son from falling down on the ground. A smile grew on Minato's face, which looked to be carbon copies of Naruto's, as he looked at his son's smiling face. Good morning to you too. Naruto. A voice from the kitchen yelled, Stop harassing your father. Entering the dining room was the all-beautiful Kushina Bale, Naruto's mother and wife to Minato Bale. She was currently in a maid outfit and was bringing in a plate with Naruto's breakfast on it. Good morning mother. Naruto said with a shining smile on his face, which also put one onto Kushina's face as well. His happiness was impossible to evade. Good morning, son. She said calmly as she set his breakfast down on the table, in which he started to gobble down like an animal. Ignoring the beast that was eating her food, she turned to Minato. Love, I have to leave now. They want me in early today. All right, Kushina stated Minato as he got up from his seat and kissed her cheek. Have a good day. The family consisting of Kushina, Minato, and Naruto were all low-class devils from the Bale clan. They were all purebloods, but they just ranked low in power. Kushina was a maid for the main family of the Bales, which included Miss Labile and Lord Beale himself, who lived in ba Bale Castle. Her job was to help Miss Labile with jobs around the castle, as well as taking care of castle itself, making sure every room was kept clean. She worked six days a week and was called whenever the main family needed her services. Goodbye, Naruto. Be good at school today. Said Kushina as she slowly teleported away for a day at work. Naruto, aren't you late as well? Asked Minato as he looked at the clock. Minato Bale, a low-class pureblood is currently a solider of the underworld, ready to be called in whenever enemies threaten their home. He surprisingly had time off from the war devils were currently in, which was against the angels and fallen angels. 
Tensions between the three factions were getting smaller day by day, as the number of losses on all sides is affecting the decision-making process of the leaders of each faction. Naruto turned his head to see the clock which read 7.45. Naruto's eyes shot out as his head as he looked at the time and quickly inhaled his food. I am late. He yelled as he ran back upstairs to throw on some jeans and a shirt. Before running out the door, Naruto turned around and hugged his father. Bye, Dad. I'll see you later so we can train together again. He said as he finally ran out the door with his backpack in hand. With a chuckle, Minato watched his child run down the street to school. Have a good day, Naruto. Citri Territory Citri Mansion Serifal-sama, are you ready for school today? Asked a female devil with a maid uniform on. Yes. Said a soft voice coming from a small devil in a fancy school uniform. Introduce, introducing Serifal Citri. Serifal is a young, female, pure-blood devil that is the heiress of the Citri clan. Serifal has long, black hair that covered her small frame along with the prettiest shade of pink eyes that gleamed with innocence. Being from a family like the Citri, Serifal is privileged with things like living in a huge mansion, having maids to serve her, and many more things. Serifal, said an incoming voice. The young Seraphal turned her body around to see her mother, Lady Citri, walking towards her. All the maids bowed to Lady Citri and slowly backed away, so that Lady Citri could meet her daughter. Good morning, she said calmly. Good morning, mother, Seraphal stated, hugging her mother's waist. Lady Citri smiled as she covered he child with her arms. Seraphal was Lady Citri's proudest accomplishment. She loved her daughter so much and she knew that Seraphal would do great things in the future. Are you ready to go to the academy, my child? Asked Lady Citri, her voice barely a whisper. Yes, ma'am. Answered Seraphal as she backed away from the hug to look her mother in the eye. Good. Lady Citri stated as she put a hand on Seraphal's shoulder. Remember that you are the heiress of Citri. Our family's future lies in your hands, so you need to learn and train as much as possible in order for you to make your family proud. Do you understand? Yes, ma'am. Answered Seraphal with a small smile as she looked up to her loving mother's similarly pink eyes. Lady Citri stared back at her daughter for a while with a smile, proud of her daughter's manners towards here. She then looked up to the many maids surrounding the two. Take her to school. Make sure no harm is brought to my little girl, demanded Lady Citri. Yes, ma'am. The maids answer. One of the maids approached Seraphal and held out their hand. Seraphal grabbed and the group teleported to Seraphal's school. Time skip. Hibia Academy. Okay, now that everyone is here, we can start class. Said the devil teacher as she finished counting roll. One of the students in the class raised their hand, getting the attention of, of everyone in the class. The teacher saw this and pointed to the student, giving them the floor. What is it that'll we'll be learning today? Asked the student. Great question, said the teacher as she adjusted her glasses. Today we will be learning the differences in classes of devils. In her seat in the front row, Seraphal perked up at the topic. She always wanted to learn more about the devil ranking system that they all followed and knew that she would have to learn this in order to become a proper heir to the Citri clan. These rules that we follow are set to differentiate the lower class devils from the higher devils. The teacher then pointed to all the students in the class. Each and every one one of you in here are high class devils because of the families that you come from. Your individual families have exclusive powers and talents that benefit the devil society and you all should be proud that you come from such amazing and important families, the teacher explained. Sarah Fall raised her hand next, in which the teacher called for her to speak. What about middle and lower class devils? Well, said the teacher as she adjusted her glasses, you can still be born into those two classes, but you can also be promoted as well. Most middle class devils are devils that have purpose in our society. 
They are excellent workers and have mid-tier to high ranks in the military. They are the closest devils the garnering the statues as a high-class devil. And the low-class devils? One student asked. The teacher smirked a little as she adjusted her glasses once more. Low-class devils aren't anything special. They are servants for higher-tier devils and will always remain at the bottom. They don't have any special abilities and are our foot soldiers. Never take any disrespect from a low-class devil. But, said Seraphal as she raised her hand, shouldn't we be nice to those below us? You can be, said the teacher. But it isn't need. Always remember, my prestigious students, the teacher once again adjusted her glasses as she looked up to her class that was listening to her every word. You are better than any lower class devil. Remember that. Exceeding, exceeding Excellence Academy. Class, please quiet down. Said the teacher in his chair as he drank his coffee in stress. I'm the Mao of the whole underworld. Shouted a student as he stood on top of his desk. No, I am. Shouted another. Me. 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 Shut the hell up, I said. Said the teacher as he slammed his hand on the table, scaring his obnoxious students. Naruto sat towards the back of his class folding paper, an activity he picked up after seeing some of the other kids do it. He used tape to hold the paper together and made it to where the paper looked like claws. He inserted his fingers into the paper claws until it looked like he had claws for fingers. Smirking deviously, Naruto jumped at one of the students that were standing on their desk and swiped at them with his fake claws. Picking up on what he was doing, the student acted like his neck was bleeding out and fell on the floor as he faked died. All of the students, including Naruto, laughed at the scene and pointed at the child. Who's next? Said Naruto as he held up his fake claws in victory. Next to go to detention, I presume? Asked the teacher who appeared right behind Naruto and put his hands on Naruto's shoulders, slowly adding pressure. Ow. 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 Okay, I'm sorry. Shouted Naruto as he tried to get away. The male teacher smirked a little at the squirming Naruto and let him go. Maybe you all should get back to your seats before I do it to everyone in this room. He shouted. The room suddenly went quiet as all the students went back to their seats as expected. The male teacher grunted before returning back to his desk and grabbing the roll call. Kuromo Kurono. Here. I came. Here. Naruto Bail. I'm not here. Twitch. Twitch Kensai Belial. Here. The teacher went on until he finished the roll call and put the list back in his desk. He sighed as he drank the rest of his coffee and looked up at his students. Today's lesson isn't as fun as the others. Said the teacher as he got up from his desk. What do you mean? None of your lessons are fun. Said a student that got the class laughing. After the students finished laughing, he continued, Today's lesson is about devil rank. He stated as he wrote the words devil rank on the chalkboard. Does anyone know the three ranks a devil can be? He asked. One student raised their hands. Please answer, Kaido. Said the teacher. There are low, middle, and high-ranking devils, right? He answered slash asked. Correct. Said the teacher. Most of us in this room are low-class devils, with a few of being middle-class devils. This, my students, is a real-world situation that I hate about our society. What do you mean? Asked another student. Well, said the teacher as he sat down on the edge of his desk. Because of your devil rank, most of you are already judged, from the day you are born, as lesser. Lesser than the high-class devils, you mean, answered Akam. Correct again. He said as he ran a hand through his hair. As long as you remain a low or middle-class devil, you will always be below the higher devil, and remain servants for the rest of your long lives. But why doesn't it have to be this way? 
asked an unnamed male student. Why can't everyone be equal? And what judges what rank you are? Power. The teacher simply said. Those who are strong will always remain at the top. The rest of us will remain in places like this fucked up school. He slowly took out a pack of cigarettes and placed on in his mouth. He moved to a window and opened it up. But why is it like this? Asked the same student, not even caring that he was smoke smoking in front of them. The teacher put his thumb on the end of the cigarette and it all of a sudden lit. He inhaled some and blew the smoke out the window. He looked outside for a while before looking back at his class. My name is Asuma. No last name. Because I don't have a last name, one can tell that I don't come from a family. Some of you may have known of this. Said the now named Asuma as he looked at Akame specifically. Certain families have power because of abilities they have as specific to their own clan. They are high class devils and will always rule the underworld while the rest of us get treated like dirt. It was dead silent in the class as the students looked at Asuma, who seemed to be lost in thought. It was a while before he continued to speak. However, there are some of you that come from clans. Take Kensai for example. Said Asuma, causing the class to look at the young devil in curiosity. Kensai hails from the Belial clan, one of the lower-ranking families in the 72 pillars but still a family. Asuma took a quick smoke before continuing. The Belial clan has a special ability called worthlessness. Kensai, do you know how this ability works? With a nod of his head, Kensai answered, Worthlessness allows devils from my family to stop any attack and defense, if I remember correctly. But in order for us to cancel them out, we have to understand how they work. Correct. Said Asuma. It is an interesting and powerful ability if in the hands of a, of a master. However, Asuma took another hit before glancing back at his student. Did you know that there is a high chance that you won't achieve this ability because of your blood? Well, what do you mean? Asked Kensai. If you attend this school, then it is a high probability that your family are low-class devils, correct? He asked. After getting a nod from Kensai, Asuma continued, that also means that they aren't very strong, not holding any real position in the military or politically. I'm going to also assume that they don't have your clan's ability. Right. Said a now worried Kensai. Which probably means you won't be activating that gift during your lifetime as well because your parents don't have the skill either, meaning that they weren't that significant. Maybe their parents were also low-class devils that didn't have the ability. It is hard for low-class devils to achieve their clan's ability because it isn't known in our families. It's common for mid-class devils to have their clan ability, but it won't be as strong as a high-class devil. As for low-class devils, we'll be lucky to be born with slightly larger magic reserves. Said Asuma with a sigh. Some of your parents are maids or butlers, Naruto's head peaked up at hearing this, some of you parents are fighting in the war with the angels and fallen angels, a lot of your parents are dead. A lot of the children's head lowered in sadness at the statement. Many of the devil children's parents has died in the war, protecting the underworld and the ones they love. Meanwhile, continued Asuma, the high-class bastards sit in their mansions, all safe and sound. Some go to the war, but are favorited in many aspects. Their lives are put first. Ours are put last. What can we do? Asked Naruto as he looked up at Asuma, who turned his head to his blonde-haired student. What can we do in order to be like them? Asuma smiled a little as he turned his head back to the window, inhaling again from his cancer stick. It took a while for him to speak, but when he did, the room couldn't have gotten quieter. Nothing. Time skip. Cit Citri Mansion. Sarah Fall was in the backyard of the mansion sitting with her legs folded with both of her hands together, eyes closed. She was concentrating on her magical reserves, trying to get a feel for it. Slowly, a blue aura surrounded Sarah Fall's small body. Sarah Fall inhaled slowly as she tapped deeper into her magic. 
Good job, Seraphal Sama. Said one of Seraphal's many instructors as they watched the girl concentrate in the middle of the meadow. Now use the magic you have built up to attack with a water spell. Seraphal slowly opened her eyes and found a target, and nearby tree just waiting to be cut down. She slowly stood from the ground and pointed at the tree. A spell circle appeared just in front of her outstretched finger and water shot from it, flying like bullets towards the innocent tree. The water streak slashed into the tree, creating five deep cuts embedded into the tree's bark. A small applause came from her instructors as they looked at Seraphal with pride. That was excellent, Seraphal Sama. Said one of the instructors. If you keep working like this, then you'll certainly be able to represent the Citri clan among the other clans in the future. Seraphal saw the nods of approval and smiled to herself. She was going to represent her clan with pride and show everyone the power of Citri. She was going to have some fun along the way, but she would still work to her goal of being the strongest Citri there ever was. Thank you for training me. Said Seraphal with humbleness as she bowed to her instructors. Gasp filled her ears and she looked up to see her instructors with worried looks on their faces. One slowly approached Seraphal and gently pulled her up from her bow. Seraphal Sama, we aren't worthy for you to bow to us like that. We should be bowing at you. Please remember that you are the most important per person here. Said the instructor. Now, let's continue on with your training. With a nervous nod, Sarah Fall began to concentrate again, but she had this nagging feeling in the back of her head, but she didn't know what it was. Naruto's House Naruto was back home after a long day in school and reflected on what he learned from his teacher. Would he really be like this all his life? He didn't even think there was anything wrong with his life. He had two loving parents and had what he needs to live. Of course, there were some things he wanted but couldn't get because they were expansive and his family didn't that much money, but he was happy. And that was all that matters, right? Currently, Naruto was in his mother and father's room at the moment. Minato wasn't home and Kushina was still at work, meaning Naruto was at the house by himself. He was doing was of his favorite pastimes, rummaging through his parents' belongings to find cool stuff. So far, he hadn't found anything yet. Rummaging through his mother's stuff, he finally found something that interested him, Kushina's pincushion. Naruto slowly took the needles out of the cushion and examined the sharp ends. He always found sharp things interesting to him, especially needles. They were so small and could go undetected until the last moment when they entered one's flesh. Naruto didn't know if his fascination with sharp objects was a good thing, but there was no denying that his mother's sewing needles were one of his favorite toys when his, when his parents weren't in the house. He slowly used one of the needles to trace marks on his hands, making it a game to see if he could do so without stabbing himself. He was doing good until... Ow! shouted Naruto as he put too much pressure on the needle, and it inserted into his skin by a little bit. Suppressing his tears, he pulled the needle out of his skin and watched as a very small amount of blood came from the hole he couldn't even see. That, hurt. He said to himself as he watched the blood drip down his hand. He was fascinated by the red substance, and he didn't even know why. The red, thick water of life that kept him alive, slowly exiting a wound he caused himself. It brought an unhealthy curiosity to the child. What Naruto didn't know what that Minato had made it back to the house with grocery bags in his hands. After putting the grocery bags in the right place, he headed upstairs to his room where he sensed his son to be. Slowly opening the door, he called out to his son. Naru. Surprise filled Naruto and instinct took over. An unknown feeling took over his hand as he grabbed the needle, turned his body around, and threw the needle to where he heard the noise. While Naruto's movements were quick for a child his age, Minato, a well-known warrior throughout the low-class devils, quickly moved his head out of the way as the red needle embedded itself into the door. Wait, red needle! Shock filled Naruto's body as he saw his father at the door. He dropped the pin cushion and ran up to his father in worry. Dad. 
Are you okay? I didn't mean to do that. You surprised me and and I didn't mean to do that. I just dash. Naruto. Minato yelled out, trying to get his son's attention. It's okay. Honestly. I'm fine. Minato said with a reassuring smile. He lowered himself down to one new as he looked face to face with his son. Are you okay? What do you mean? Asked Naruto. Look at your hand. Naruto raised his hand up to see that it was surrounded in a red aura. Amazed by, by the light show that his hand was giving the father-son duo. Amazed by his hand, he looked up to his father. What is this, father? Asked a curious Naruto. Minato smiled and put his arm around Naruto's back. That my son, he said with a smile, is your way out of here. You have the Bale bloodline in your hands. A bloodline neither me nor your mother could activate. What is it called? Asked Naruto as he father grabbed his other hand and pulled him out to the backyard. The Power of Destruction Later that day Citri Mansion Being a high-class Citri devil had many perks. One of those many perks were extravagant dinners made by the Citri servants every day. Seraphal Citri is sitting with her father and mother, Lady and Lord Citri, at a magnificent dinner table that could fit over fifteen people. Lord Citri sat at the top of the table with Lady Citri to his left and his daughter to right. So Seraphal, said Lord Citri as he whipped his mouth with a napkin, how was school today? He asked. Slowly gulping down the mashed potatoes she was mashing up more, she answered, it was good. I made sure to listen to everything that my instructor said, and I learned a lot today. Really now? Said Lord Citri as he looked upon his daughter. Tell me something you learned today. I learned about the ranking system that we abide by, father. Said Seraphal as she took a quick gulp of her drink. Our teacher told us that high-class devils are at the top, and that we are better than the other devils. Lord and Lady Citri frowned at what their daughter said and also noticed how some of the maids and butlers reacted. While it was professional to keep up an emotional face while working, some dropped their facade and had a face as displeasure on hearing what the young Citri learned in school. Um. Sarah Fall dear. Said Lady Citri while reaching out and grabbing her daughter's hand. Yes, yes. She said with a cute head tilt. Well, what your teacher said today isn't true. Answered Lady Citri. While all devils aren't born the same rank, never think yourself as better than low-ranked devils. We Citrus are proud that we treat our servants nicely and with respect, respect that everyone deserves if you ask me. Then why did my teacher say what she said today? About high-class devils being better? If we aren't better, why is there a ranking system like the one we live under? Asked Seraphal. I'll say, for a young girl, you are very wise, Seraphal. Complimented Lord Citri. Most children don't think like you during their youth. He ate a piece of food before continuing to speak. Yes, while we do have a ranking system for devils based upon one's power or family they are born into, you shouldn't treat other devils lower than you because we all serve the same purpose of protecting the underworld. We all want to live our lives out like how we want to and nobody should be discriminated for it. That is how the Citri live. For other devils however, this may not be so. The respect we have for our servants is what makes the Citri such a tight-knitted family, Lady Citri said, picking up where her husband left off. No matter what rank we are, Citri look out for each other. It just so happened that you are born into a richer part of the Citri clan, and you should thank Lucifer for such a life that not many devils have. Yes ma'am said Seraphal with a smile as she went back to eating her food. Lady and Lord Citri sighed in content, happy that they have such an understanding daughter. Both knew of the troubles that were spreading throughout the land when it came to respecting tradition. Some devils want to change, while others want to keep the same traditions going. Soon, soon, thought both Lord and Lady Citri, something big will happen. Bale Territory 
Naruto's house. Later on the day, Kushina made her way back to the house after a long day of work. When she came home, she saw an ecstatic Minato and a slightly confused but happy Naruto. Wondering what her two boys were up to, she slowly made her way to the backyard where there were now small craters here and there. What is going on? Asked Kushina as he approached to two. Kushina! Shouted Minato as he picked up his wife and spun her around. Our son is amazing! Me Minato! She shouted as she tried to hold in her giggles at seeing the man so happy. Put me down and tell me what's going on. After spinning her a few more times and then putting her on the ground, our happy Minato explained to Kushina. Kushina! Our child has a gift. The gift of the Bale clan. Gift of the Beal clan? What do you dash Kushina cut herself off as she looked at the many craters filling their backyard and the gears in her head clicked instantly. Naruto! Said Kushina as she saw for herself as her child, her baby Naruto, had his hand encased in a red aura. Naruto you did it! Shouted Kushina as she rushed to her son and hugged him, surprising the boy with her speed. Nevertheless, he laughed and hugged his mother back. Yup, yup, yup. I did it. Even though I still don't understand what's so special about this power of destruction. I mean, it makes a great shovel if you ask me. Now we can plow up dirt for the garden whenever you want ma. Said the innocent Naruto. Wait. Said Kushina as she released her child, confusing him all the more. She slowly walked up to her husband and pulled him away from Naruto, wanting to speak to him in private. So, he has, he has the power of destruction. Muttered Kushina. Yes. This is great for him, right? Hardly any low-class bale unlocks the power of destruction. And especially so young. I would think you would be happier about this. What's going on? Asked Minato as he was worried for his wife. It's just... Kushina hesitated as she looks back at her son before continuing, I don't know how the elders will take this. Minato nodded his head, understanding what Kushina meant about the the Bale clan leaders. They never want to see one of the low-ranking members prosper, and will try at anything to stop them from growing in fear of trying to take over the clan. The elders and Lord Beale himself only wanted those that were high-class devils prospering and representing the clan, and they'll do anything to keep it that way. Maybe. Muttered Minato as he looked back at his son that was shooting destruction around the yard. Maybe we could hide his powers? Let him mature in life, and then reveal it the clan heads. Then, it will give him time to understand devil society and grow in his magic. Hiding his bloodline is impossible. Stated Kushina. He is just a child, and he will surely want to use it. Maybe we can keep him from using outside the house. We should keep this a secret between the three of us. Yeah, but we don't know the first thing about the power of destruction. Said Minato. How can we train him properly if we don't even have that power ourselves? He questioned. Our son is creative. He'll understand it over time. What we need to is make this, this house a safe place for him. Let's set a barrier around the house so that we'll be alerted anytime some tries to come here. We'll train him in his magic control and he'll have to do the rest. Believe in your son, Minato. Said Kushina. Minato looked at his wife's eyes for a while before smiling and nodding his head in agreement. They could do this. All they had to do was inform Naruto. Naruto! Shouted Minato as he got the boy's attention. Come here, please. We have some explaining to do. Years later. The relationship between Devil, Angel, and Fallen Angel was still rocky, but there was some peace between the three factions. While the peace was only because of the heavy losses that came on all three sides, peace was still peace. However, this peace was weak and could be easily destroyed even if one small battle happened between the factions. There was a dispute going on in the underworld on the devil's side. 
there were devils that wanted to take advantage of their enemies' injuries and attack now. Such an opportunity like this wouldn't be available for much longer, and these devils wanted to attack now and not later. This is what history has called the Old Satan Faction, a group of devils that wanted to stick with older traditions and attack the fallen angels and angels themselves. However, there were another group of devils that didn't want this to happen. This group of devils wanted to stray from the older ways and keep the loose peace that they had with the other two factions. Many lives were lost from all three factions. This group believed that they were more vulnerable than the other factions and wanted to rebuild, not go back out and fight a losing war. This was the anti-Satan faction, another group of devils that wanted peace over war. The underworld couldn't handle another attack from her enemies nor does it have enough military power to attack one of the other factions. These two beliefs split the underworld in half, clans turning on ally clans, families against families, brothers against sisters. The underworld was currently going through a civil war, a war even worse than the war between the three factions. To fight your enemies is one thing, but for your enemies to be your kin is painful to fight against, both physically and mentally. Naruto's House You be safe out there. Please don't do anything crazy. Said Kushina as she looked one of the men that meant the most to her in this world. Naruto Bale, now in his early twenties, was no longer a little boy. He was a five feet eight inches man that was stronger than even his old man. After years of training alone, Naruto has become a master of his power of destruction. It took some time because he didn't have a real teacher that could teach him, but he progressed over the years and was ready to display his power. His father was already in the war with the rest of the clan for a while and Naruto was now of age to fight. The Bale clan surprisingly chose to fight with the anti-Satan faction, believing that fighting against the other factions at the moment was stupid and would do no good. It was surprising because the clan's traditions relate a lot with the old Satan faction's beliefs, so maybe this was a step in the right direction for the clan. Suited in a black pants and an orange jumpsuit, Naruto leaned down and kissed his mother's cheek and hugged her. Don't worry ma. I'm ready to fight to free the underworld. I promise you that I won't do anything stupid. I'll stick with my group and not do anything irrational. Good. And make sure that your father is okay. Because without him, I don't know what I'll do. Muttered Kushina as she hugged her son tight. This made Naruto frown a little. Naruto was smarter than what he let on, and many people already believed that Naruto was very smart. Throughout the years, Naruto noticed the love that she would give Minato, his father, over him. Naruto loved his mother to death, that was no lie, but Naruto could tell. His mother loved Minato more than she loved him. Naruto didn't know if that was a good or bad thing, Minato was her husband for, for Lucifer's sake, but as a devil and her child, Naruto wanted the amount of love Kushina would give Minato. But he dealt with it throughout the years. Seeing your husband leave for war every now, and then must have been tough for Kushina, and Naruto didn't want to add any more pressure that Kushina had on her shoulders already. I'll come back alive, mother. I'll see if I can get in contact with dad as well. We aren't in the same legion, but I'll see what I can do. It's time to show everybody what I'm about. He said with a smile. Good. Said Kushina with a smile as she placed her hand on Naruto's cheek. I believe in you, my son. Stay alive. Show everyone what you're made of and never forget where you came from. Yes, ma'am. Said Naruto with confidence as he kissed his mother's forehead on last time before slowly backing away. I'll be home soon. Said Naruto as the Bale clan symbol appeared below his feet. Goodbye was the last words he said as he teleports alone, leaving Kushina by herself. Take care of yourself. Kushina whispered as she watched him leave. Time skip. Run, Seraphal Sama. Shouted a devil covered in armor. We have everything taken C-A-U-R-K. The man was suddenly hit with a fire spell that incinerated his body. 
A now older Seraphal's eyes widened in shock as she saw one of her clansmen die protecting her. Seraphal joined the anti-Satan faction with her family and wanted to defend her home. Because of the influence she had as a high-class devil, and that she was a powerhouse that did a lot in the war, she was high in military ranks. She was placed in Legion 56, leaded by a high-ranking Beale that had tons of war experience from the past. Their mission, help the Belial clan face off against the rebels of the clan that joined the old Satan faction. Faction. The house was divided on should they continue to attack or fall back from the three-faction war which created the situation they're currently in. The Belial clan's territory was a battlefield as the family fought against each other. Legion 56 was made and sent to help out the Belial that was on the anti-Satan faction and was meant to be an easy win by outnumbering the rebel Belial, which was already a smaller clan of devils if compared to other clans. However, the old Satan faction anticipated this move and sent waves of legions out to fight, outnumbering Legion 56 and Belial clan members a part of the anti-Satan faction 3 to 1. Legion 56 was trapped and was trying their hardest to survive, but they were slowly dying out. One of those who were dead was the original leader of the Legion 56. Sarah Fall, however, stepped as the new general to avoid confusion on the battlefield. Accepting her as their new leader, the Legion fought with all their might, but the numbers were still against them. Sarah Fall has spent over 90% of her magical reserves help her fellow members out, but the numbers were too great to save everyone and now Sarah Fall was surrounded by at least 300 old Satan faction members. The devil that incinerated Seraphal's guardian stepped up to Seraphal, showing that he was the leader of this brigade. Seraphal Citri. You are to surrender now and come back with us for interrogation. If not, you will be killed here on the spot. He yelled. His army shouted in agreement. Killing a powerful devil like Seraphal could turn the tide of the war in their favor. Shit thought Seraphal as she thought about the odds of this battle, which didn't look good. She would have to spend every lost drop of her magic carefully if she wanted to avoid being killed. She slowly got from the ground and prepared for battle. If she was to die today, she would do so defending what she loved. My name, my name is Seraphal Citri, and I won't bow down to you scums. You are fighting for a lost cause that will push the devil population down even lower. How dare you side with those who are willing to continue this cycle of war? She yelled with bravery. Like we care what you say. It seems that you won't surrender, so dash. Suddenly, in front of Seraphal, a bale magic symbol glowed, signaling that somebody was teleporting there. Out appeared a devil with black pants, blonde hair. An orange armor? Seraphal Sama. I'm here to protect you at all cost. Stated the man that had to be around her age. No. Stand down. You can't handle this group. Go run. She commanded with worry. She didn't want to see another one of her comrades die in vain trying to protect her. No can do. Said the devil as he looked towards the leader. Plus, I have a score to settle with that devil. Ah ha 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 ha! Laughed their leader as he looked at Naruto. You think you can do anything? I can barely feel out your magic. Fucking weakling trying to play hero. Laughter surrounded the two as the whole army laughed at Naruto. He ignored it and pulled out small pieces of paper. Sarah Fall wondered what he was going to do with them, but she almost fell over in shock as she watched the mysterious devil throw the pieces of paper in the air letting them fall in random positions around them. This caused another uproar of laughter from the army watching him. Sarah Fall looked at him in range and yelled, What are you doing? Do you like making yourself look like a fool? Stay inside the circle of papers. Said the devil as a red hue surrounded him. Let's end them now. Fire! Shouted the rebel leader. Hundreds of magical blasts shot towards Seraphal and the mysterious devil's position. Seraphal created an ice dome to cover the two of them as the attacks made contact. Listen. 
she said to the man as she tried to hold up the dome. You need to get out of here now. Have you noticed yet that you're not blocking anything yet? Asked the man. Sarah Fall wondered, wondered what he was talking about when she realized she wasn't using any magic to keep her dome intact. The papers are protecting us. They're creating a shield for us. She looked outside of her dome and confirmed that a light green dome was surrounding her own dome. Once they stop attacking, I'll use the smoke screen to attack from here. Don't use any melee attacks. Stay within the circle of paper. He added. Sarah Fall nodded and watched as the hue that surrounded the man grow in light. He seemed to know what he was talking about. What is your name? Asked Sarah Fall. The smiled when he noticed that the attacking ceased. Suddenly, the red hue that covered him flowed to his fingertips. Naruto looked back at Sarah Fall and answered. Naruto Bale, low-class devil and your protector for this battle. Turning back around, Naruto started waving his arms around in the air, like he was boxing with a shadow. However, Sarah Fall knew better. She watched as small strands of energy flew from his fingertips as he moved his arms around. Even a high-class devil would have missed it, but Sarah Fall saw it clearly. The power of destruction? But why are you using it in such a way? She asked. Naruto kept his smile up as he continued his deadly dance seemingly with an invisible person. When the smoke screen weakened, Sarah Fall watched as the rebel forces' bodies dropped for reason they weren't aware for. Hey! What's going on? I can't move. What did he do? Sarah Fall was amazed at what she saw. The tide of this battle turned in only 30 seconds. The only question was how did he do it? What did you do? Asked Seraphal as she scooted a little closer to her savior. Nothing much. I just destroyed their joints. They can recover from my attack if they are saved by their allies, so I'll finish them now. Said Naruto as a red ball appeared in his left hand. What did you do to my men? Shouted the leaders as he revealed himself in the air. Air. Sarah Fall squinted her eyes to try to get a closer look at the leader. There were small holes around his arms and leg area. So, you dodged my attack. Proves that you're good. Said Naruto as he looked up at the general. You 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 took out the majority of my men with that that, whatever it was. He shouted in rage. A purple aura surrounded the man as he prepared to attack. Yeah, but this should finish the scavengers. Said Naruto as he held up his left hand with the red orb. Disperse. He shouted. Another dome surrounded the two, surprising Serfall again. However, this time, the dome started to grow in a quick rate, marking the ground below it. Coming into contact with the first fallen enemy, the devil shouted in pain as his body started to disintegrate from the shield. As he domes passed through the fallen's body, not even ashes were spared. The injured devils could only watch as their death quickly approached them and turned their bodies into flakes. No one spared and what was a full battlefield was now a barren wasteland with only three people. The general saw red as he watched the last of his group die. Quickly, he charged down towards Naruto, wanting to end his life as painfully as possible. Naruto took a knee in a deep breath as he finished the job. That move always took a lot out of him. He was going to have to recharge before he could move around quickly. Sarah Fall stared in shock at the young devil in front of her. For him to do something like this with his power. His control over the power of destruction was almost as good as Serzex. Um, Sarah Fall sama Can you handle my approaching doom right now? I can't move out the way quick enough," said a slightly worried Naruto as he watched the man fly towards him at incredible speeds. Snap! Snapping out of her shock, she focused on the incoming threat. Summoning her magic, Seraphal shot quick ice bolts from her hand and to the general. Being a general, he easily dodged the attack, but was misdirected from the attack. He landed on the ground and charged up a purple beam. 
This is for all of my soldiers you killed you monster. This beam will indefinitely end you and that tired citri. Suffer now, because dash he was cut off as an icicle grew from under his body and impaled him, his blood coating the spear. He talks too much. Muttered Seraphal as she turned her attention from the dead general to Naruto. Her eyes softened as she watched him try to stand back up. Putting his arm around her shoulder, she helped him stand. Thanks. Said a grateful. That move takes a lot out of my reserves, but I should be okay for now. He said to her. She nodded and let him stand on his own two feet. Naruto took in a deep breath and his eyes glowed red for a second. The paper that Naruto used as a shield levitated off the ground and flew back into Naruto's pocket. Thanks for the help. You really saved me. Said Seraphal with a smile. No problem, Seraphal sama Said Naruto with a huff as he slowly gained mobility. Just making sure that you're okay. Hey. Enough of the Sama business. Just because I'm a Citri doesn't mean that you should treat me all royal. She shouted childishly. Naruto laughed a little before answering, sure thing Sarah. Seraphal's heart jumped as she heard the nickname he gave her, and a heavy blush adorned her face. Nobody she's ever known has acted so comfortable towards her so quickly. People didn't try to get to know the real her because of her title as heir of the Citri clan. She wanted to show that she was worthy for the position, but she didn't want to be alone while chasing that dream. Noticing but, but not saying anything about her blush, Naruto spoke, we still have a battle to win. I know that you're low on magic, so I'll do the heavy lifting. I'll disable our attackers and you'll finish them off with some quick kill ice magic. Agreed? Shaking her head to get rid of her blush, Seraphal had a determined look on her face as she put one fist in the air. Yeah. Let's finish this. She exclaimed as the two rushed back out to the battlefield. Hours later. While the landscape around them was heavily damaged, Legion 56 and the loyal members of the Belial were successful in their mission in defending the Belial territory. The Belial territory was now under the anti Satan faction's control. Victory! shouted Seraphal as she held up an ice spear. The Legion shouted a war cry of victory, happy that the day's battle was won. Today was battle as one, but there are plenty more enemies for us to face in order to protect the underworld. But let's show our appreciation for the hero of this battle, Naruto Beale. The army cried out again to a shocked Naruto. He wasn't looking for thanks for doing his job. He just wanted to help everyone out. He had to take this battle seriously, or he would have lost his own life. After reviewing the battlefield to make sure that no one was left behind, the Legion made their way back to base. The group deserved a few days of rest after such a traumatic battle. Finding Naruto in the maze of people, Seraphal flew down and landed next to the blonde-haired hero. Yo! He said with a head nod. Hi! She said back as she started to walk with him. You need something, Sarah? Hope I didn't do anything wrong. He said. No, no, no. You didn't do anything wrong. Said Seraphal as she shook her hands ba back and forth. I just wanted to thank you for what you did today. You really took control of the battle. It's not a problem. I just did what I was supposed to do. No harm done. He said as he put his hands behind his head in a relaxed position. However, one thing this battle has shown me is that I need to grow my magic reserves and increase my stamina. I am really burnt out right now, and I need to be able to last longer on the field. You, on the other hand, were amazing. What? She said as she looked up to the taller devil. The way you handle yourself during battle. You are more confident and stronger than me. I want to reach your level soon so I can keep up with you since we work so well together out there today. He said with a smile. You really think I did good? She asked with big eyes that reminded Naruto of a child seeking approval of their parent. 
Sure did. You are amazing. He said again, this time, looking her dead in the eyes. Sarah Fall stared back at his baby blue eyes that seemingly had her in a trance. The same was for Naruto as he stared her pink eyes that seemed to call out to him. They were a shade that he never seen before, and he was attracted to it. Hey! He said, snapping the both of them out of their trance. When we get back to base, do you want to talk at one of the bars? Giving him a soft smile, Sarah Fall answered. I'd like that. Two years later, Naruto Bale was slowly making his way back to his mother's home, a sight he hasn't seen in a long time. The battle between the two factions was still going strong, but Naruto would still fight behind his clan. He and Sarah Fall, after a few battles and get-togethers, started to date. She was a shining star in his dark world fil filled with war and blood. Walking up to the door, he didn't sense his mother's energy inside, meaning that she must have been out for something. Naruto was sure that she was off of work during this time of day, so he just assumed that she was out for groceries. Entering the house, a pungent smell assaulted Naruto's nostrils so bad that Naruto had to pinch his nose together to keep from inhaling such a disgusting smell. It reminded him of the dead, decaying bodies that filled the many battlefields he's fought at over the years. What the hell is that? Naruto said as he entered the kitchen. Walking in, he saw that there were flies surrounding many bags of garbage that hadn't been taken out yet. He also saw that the sink was filled with dishes, a sight he would never see during his childhood. Kushina would always wash the dishes right after they ate as a family. What is going on here? He said to himself as sat down at the dinner table. There was an open letter and his curiosity was too great to ignore it. Opening the letter, he read. Dear Kushina Bale. My name is Jujua Beelzebub, middle-class devil and leader of Legion 10. I am sorry to inform you that after a battle with the old Satan faction, your husband, Minato Bale, has D. Naruto dropped the letter as his heart throbbed in pain. His father was dead. Dad. Naruto put both of his hands on his face and sighed his stress. He was used to finding out that his comrades were dead, but this was something different. The man that raised him was dead. Naruto remembered that Minato would be called to war many times during his childhood, but at least he came back every time. That was a luxury most families didn't have, but now it was his turn to face the fact that war brought nothing but pain. Wait a second, said Naruto as he picked up and unfolded the message. He then checked the top right corner of the letter. This letter was dated three weeks ago. The gears clicked in his head instantly as he jumped from his chair and ran to his parents' room. Ma. He shouted as he kicked down the locked door. She wasn't in there, but the disgusting smell was stronger in this part of the house. He ran to bathroom door and opened it, hoping that she didn't do what he thought she did. Quickly opening the door, Naruto's eyes widened at the sight of his mother hung from the shower head with rope. And make sure sure that your father is okay. Because without him, I don't know what I'll do. Mother. Citri Mansion. If she had to describe her life right now, Sarah Fall would probably say that it was the happiest she's ever been. Even thought her home was currently split and at civil war with each other, she had the best support system in the world and it came in the form of one Naruto bail. She felt safest when she was with him, even though she was stronger than him. It was his determination to protect his home that attracted Sarah Fall to him. While he was a low-class devil, Naruto was a great leader, helping her handle a few of legions under her command. And they both understood each other, understanding that they came from two different backgrounds and had to adapt to one another in order for their relationship to work. Sarah Fall's favorite date she has with Naruto is meeting him at his cabin, laying with him in the bed, and just talking about random things. It was something that she never had before, and it made her feel special. Of course, she would interrupt their conversation with a couple of kisses now and then. Sarah Fall had a small break from the war, and she used it to visit back home. Entering the dining hall, Sarah Fall walked into the scene of her parents, 
Lord and Lady Citri, along with Lord Bale and Miss La Bale sitting at the dinner table. Sarah Fall. It's good to see you. Lord Citri said as he stood from his seat. Please sit with us. UMM. Hello. Sarah Fall gave an awkward wave to the Bales who waved back at her. She never met the Bales before and she felt a little nervous because they were the leaders of the clan her boyfriend came from. After taking a seat in front of Lord Bale, Lord Citri continued, Sarah Fall. Sarah Fall, we have heard of all of the marvelous accomplishments that you've done at war in the name of Citri. You are really made me, your mother, and the whole clan proud. Lord Citri is correct. Stated Lord Beale as he took a quick sip on wine. I've also heard of the accomplishments you have done. Very impressive. Thank you. Said Sarah Fall with a light smile, but I can't take all of the credit. My troops have proven their loyalty and strength when it is needed. While this war may last a long time, I know that the anti-Satan faction will win in the end. Agreed. Said Lord Beale, and while I am impressed of your efforts on the battlefield, there is a certain reason why I'm here. The atmosphere in the room went from calm to serious as Sarah Fall stared at the man in front of her. Just by that comment, she knew what he was talking about. It wasn't a secret that she was seeing Naruto, and it's become a popular topic among the devils in war. A high-class devil like Sarah Fall, actually dating a low-ranking warrior like Naruto? While Naruto has proved his worth on the battlefield, people weren't used to seeing two devils with ranks as different as the sun and moon actually dating. And your reason? She knew she shouldn't have said it like that, but Sarah Fall would defend Naruto with all her might. Sarah Fall. How disrespectful! Her mother exclaimed. Apologize to Lord Bale at once. Lord Bale held up his hand to Lady Citri. There isn't a need for that. This is a touchy topic. He said. He took another sip of wine before continuing, I've heard that you've been dating one of my clansmen. Yes, you are correct. She answered with sophistication. Naruto Bale, if I'm right? Correct again. Naruto Bale. The low-class devil. That is where there is a problem. He stated. He stated. What does that have to do with anything? Sarah Fall's usually happy face was slowly turning sour as the conversation continued. Well, dear, interrupted Lord Citri. It isn't really. Befitting, for a devil of your stature seeing such low-ranking devil. It could tarnish your image among high-class devils. On the outside, Sarah Fall looked displeased as she heard the adults talk but on the inside, she was seething. Why does it matter that Naruto's a low-class devil? He's stronger than a lot of high-class youth right now. This doesn't make any sense. She shouted in her head. Naruto will be a high-class devil after this war. Sarah Fall stated bravely, causing some eyebrow to rise in curiosity. He has proven himself on the battlefield countless times as stronger than even some of the youth of my generation. He has helped me command my legions and will continue to do amazing things. So I don't understand why we are having this conversation she stated as calmly as possible. You are correct, he is strong, especially for a low-class devil. Lord Bale said. However, no matter his strength or if he will be promoted after the war, Naruto Bale is a low-class devil. He shouldn't be with you, and you need to cut this relationship now. Who are you to tell me who to love and who not to love? Sarah Fall shouted at the man that was indifferent about her outburst. Naruto will probably be one of the strongest Bales if he continues to grow. We are you so burnt out about class? Sarah Fall shouted her father. Calm down, now. After taking a few quick breaths to calm herself, Lord Citri continued, Naruto is an excellent solider, nobody here is doubting that. However, he doesn't have the qualifications to take your hand in marriage. As the future leader to the Citri clan, you must think about any relationship you have with anyone and must judge how it will affect the clan. 
Naruto comes from a low-class family, has a despicable education based off his files, and will probably die during this war. The surface of the dinner table was sudden covered in ice. Thankfully, nobody had their hands on the table, or the ice would have traveled up their arms as well. Sarah Fall's hair hit her face as she took in what her father said. These people didn't know anything about Naruto. Who are they to judge him? You all don't understand him. He's fought so much and makes me so happy. Why doesn't anyone understand that? She muttered. Lady Citri, making a brave move, scooted closer to her daughter and placed a hand on her shoulder. Sarah Fall. You are a strong devil and I am proud of you. I've told you when you were young that you could do and be anything you wanted to. But Naruto could make it harder for you when you become clan leader. Sarah Fall revealed her teary-eyed face to her mother, showing that she was listening. What do you mean? She asked. Lady Citri took in a small breath of air before continuing, the other clan heads have been talking. They've noticed your relationship with the boy. It isn't a good image to them. They believe that the Citri could be weak because its heir is in relations with a low-class devil. When you become clan head, you could be discriminated against because of your relationship with him. It will make it harder for you to run the clan. But mother, I love him. Sarah Fall countered. No, dear. Lady Citri said with a smile. You like him, but you will get over it after the war is over and everything calms down. You'll understand later. Sarah Fall, unable to hold back her tears, hugged mother and cried in her chest. Lady Citri whispered soft words in her ear trying to comfort her daughter as much as possible. Lady Citri turned to the two bales in the room. Lord and Lady Bale, I have a proposition for you. Hum, hummed a curious Lord Beale as he rose an eyebrow. What is it that you have in mind? Will it be acceptable for Sarah Fall to date Naruto Beale for the remainder of the war? She asked. Well, I do agree with splitting the two up, but if we do it during a war, it could mess with Sarah Fall's mental state, and it may show during the war with wrongful decision making. Lord and Lady Beale took a moment to discuss the proposition between them before coming to agreement. We agree with the proposition. Until the end of the war, they may continue to be in relations said Lady Beale, speaking for the first time. The two Beals got up from their chairs and shook hands with Lord Citri. Lady Citri was still holding a crying Seraphal, so she only nodded to them as they got ready to leave. Seraphal Citri, if I may? said Lady Beale. Seraphal wiped her face with her sleeve before facing Misla. We are not doing this to harm you. The Beals and Citris have a good alliance as of now. We don't want that to ruin because of this. We Beals are looking out for you because we know that you'll become a great leader of Citri. We don't want you to be distracted from that goal because of one of our own. Do you understand? She asked. After a few sniffles, Sarah Fall wiped her face and answered, I understand. Good. Said Lord Beal. I hope you all have a good day. And with that, the two Beals exited the mansion. Sarah Fall released herself from her mother and then ran out of the room. Sarah Fall. Her father shouted to her. Let her have her time dear to sort this all out. Said Lady Citri as she watched her daughter disappear around the corner. Time skip. After the Devil Civil War. After years of fighting, the anti-Satan faction finally won the war. The fighting had become unbearable, but one side had to win and enforces, enforces their belief on how the underworld should be run. After countless battles against the own kin, the civil war was won after one of the old Satan faction's leaders suddenly disappeared. The heroes of the civil war, Sirs X Gremory, Falbium Glagialabalas, Seraphal Citri, and Ajuka Astaroth, were in talks of replacing the previous great four Satans. The four devils showed their outstanding power and strategic skill during the war and became instantly famous throughout the underworld. In honor of the four heroes, some of the high-ranking devils planned a party in their honor, 
which was happening tonight. Sarah Fall was standing in front of her mirror, making sure that her dress was okay. She was wearing an all-white, strapless dress with layers of frills starting at her waist. She had her hair tied up in her trademark pigtails with pink ribbon. Overall, she looked stunning and would be an amazing date for any male devil in the underworld. Sarah Fall turned her head after hearing a quick couple of knocks at her door. After allowing them entrance, Naruto stepped into her room dressed up as well. Wearing a simple all-black suite with a white tie, handkerchief, belt, and shoes, a well-dressed Naruto walked up to his girlfriend and date for the night. You look absolutely amazing. Naruto said as he bent down a little and kissed her cheek. She giggled a little and hugged her date. Don't talk to any other girls tonight. You look too handsome. She muttered as she talked into his chest. She was trying to hide her blush from him because she did look handsome to her very. Very handsome indeed. Naruto chuckled a little and laid his chin onto of her head. You've been so clingy lately. I don't know what's gotten into you. Sarah Fall twitched a little, but he didn't notice. You know I only have eyes for you. You shouldn't feel threatened. I know. She muttered again as turned her head a little to rest her cheek on his, his chest. But I know that now that we won the war, things will change. Naruto raised an eyebrow at that. Something seemed the matter with Seraphal, but he didn't want to put any more pressure on her than she has already. Tonight will be a big night for her, and he couldn't be filling her head with anything other than encouragement. Meanwhile, in Seraphal's mind, she was worry-stricken. She didn't have much longer with Naruto, and she was going to have to break up with him soon. She didn't want to, but Seraphal's duty to her clan had to come first. You won't have to worry about me anyway. I don't even want to go in the first place, so I don't plan on doing a lot of talking," said Naruto. Sarah Fall pulled her body back some to look Naruto in the eye. Why not? Eh. I don't think a lot of devils like me," said Naruto. Especially the high-class devils. They see me as an annoyance because I'm with you. They don't think I'm good enough for you. We well they're crazy. Sarah Fall said as she went back to her mirror to check her dress again. They don't even know you. I think you're taking this too seriously. I don't know Sarah. He muttered as sat down in on her bed. I've been getting some bad vibes from some of my clansmen these last few months. I think they may, try something. Damn it, Naruto. You're too smart for your own good. Thought Sarah Fall as she bit her bottom lip. Taking a deep breath, she continued, what do you mean? I don't know. Maybe I'm just taking this to the extreme, but the looks they give me. Sarah Fall really started to worry now. They were planning something, she just knew it. Naruto had good instinct, something he's relied on during the war to get out of certain situations, and it hasn't failed him yet. She needed to take his mind of things. I don't like talking about this she said as she walked over to him. Taking his arms, she pulled him out of the bed and next to her. Let's enjoy our date. We haven't had one in a long time. Naruto smiled at her and gave her a quick kiss. Yeah, we haven't. I'm taking things too, too far. Plus, today is all about you, right? We should celebrate your success. The two shared a few more words, made sure that they had everything, and L then headed off to the party. Time skip. Phoenix Clan event facility. The party was as being going on for an hour without a hitch. Everyone who was anyone showed up to celebrate the victory of the anti-Satan faction. Glasses of champagne and wine were filled as maids and butlers served the mass amount of devils in the party room. Classical music filled the air and conversations between devils entertained everyone. Sarah Fall and Naruto were currently sitting at a table with Lady and Lord Citri. All of the talking with the other devils tired them out and they want a break. The group was quietly talking among themselves to pass the time. Naruto, can you get me something to drink? 
asked Seraphal, while passing him her glass. No problem. He said as he picked up her glass and headed to one of the servers. After tracking one down and replacing his empty glasses with filled ones, he slowly made his way back over to Seraphal and her parents. An incoming devil bumped into Naruto, causing him to spill his drinks. Thanks to his lightning-quick reflexes, he moved out of the spilling liquid's path of staining. Low-class scum. Said the passing-by devil, and kept moving. Holding back a growl, Naruto went back to the same server to replace his glasses again. On his way back this time, he met a devil, but with positive intentions. Naruto. Said Serzex with a smile. It's good to see you. Good to see you too, Serzex. I'm glad that the war didn't scar you up to bad, bad. Naruto replied with a smirk. It didn't scar me bad, but it tired me out. He said with a chuckle. Let me introduce you to my date for the night. It was then that Naruto noticed the gray-slash-silver-haired beauty standing slightly behind Serzex. This is Grafi Elusifuge. She joined our side of the battle midway through the war, and she's been a big help for me. Good evening. Said Naruto with a slightly bow in which she returned with a quiet curtsy. What I wanted to talk to you about was how you control your power of destruction, but this isn't the place for that. I need to find Seraphal because it's time for her to give her speech. Serzek said. I was heading over to her just now. You can follow me. With a nod, Naruto led Serzex and Grafia over to the Citri table. I brought friends. Said Naruto as he set their drinks on the table and took a seat. Serzex. Shouted Seraphal as she gave him a quick hug. It must be time already? Correct. I'll lead you up to the stage. He said. Give a goodbye to Naruto and her family before walking away with Serzex and Grafia. Taking a whiff of his wine before actually drinking his wine, Naruto finally felt comfortable in the crowd of devils. He could feel somebody staring at him, but he wasn't worried at all. He considered himself on break and wasn't going to do anything wild. Naruto. Said Lord Citri, gaining the blonde's attention. I must say that your efforts during the war are impressive indeed. Thank you. While I have gained a little fame for my efforts, I just wanted to protect my home and friends. The battle was hard, but I'm glad we're the ones that came on top. Nodding his head in agreement, Lord Citri took a sip of his wine before continuing, all true. However, there is a question I wanted to ask you. You. Naruto looked up to the man letting him know that he had his attention. If you had the chance of becoming a high-class devil, would you take it? No. Naruto said simply, surprising both Lord and Lady Citri. I wouldn't do that because I've noticed the impact I brought to the low-class society. People look up to me as a prodigy and feel like they can relate to me because of my low-class statues. I wouldn't change my rank, at least, not right now because I can continue to inspire those who are just like me. Naruto took a swig of his wine before continuing, I've been offered a promotion to become a high-class devil, but it just wouldn't sit right with me. An honorable answer. Said Lord Citri. I'm sure that you've heard of the evil pieces, correct? The evil peace system, recently created by Ajuka, allowed devils to have a peerage, which allows high-class devils to reincarnate other races into the devil society to replenish the number of devils lost during the Great War. It was really a genius idea that everyone praised Ajuka for, including Naruto. Nodding his head to Lord Citri's question, he continued, Well, would you be a part of Seraphal's peerage if given the chance? Ting 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 the sound of metal hitting glass sounded through the speakers of the hall and gaining everyone's attention. Hello, everyone. My name is Seraphal Citri, heiress to Citri clan, and I wanted to give a speech about the effort put in this war. A lot of families were lost in this war. People we've known for all our lives sacrificed their own in order for us to gather like this today. But we are the last ones standing to taste victory. The crowd applauded in agreement with Seraphal's passionate speech. 
Naruto listened to his girlfriend but want to keep the conversation with Lord Citri going. To answer your question, said Naruto, I don't know if I would or wouldn't, but I'm leaning next to me not doing so. Like my last answer, I want to keep my low-class statues to keep on inspiring others in my position. I know that if I'm added to Seraphal's peerage then I would be promoted by default because a lot of people believe I should be one. One. So, I'll decline the offer if made. Hum. Mumbled Lord Citri as he scratched his beard. Naruto's answers were quite elaborate in detail and well said. And his cause made sense, inspiring others like him is a very honorable quest. However, it wasn't the answer he was looking for. Naruto. He said again. Hum. You should stop seeing my daughter. And let us live through these peaceful times for a long, long time. Finished Seraphal, raising her glass in the air. The crowd applauded in approval at her speech, standing in agreement to her strong words. However, while everyone was standing with Seraphal Styri's words of hope, Naruto was standing against Lord and Lady Citri, who had a crowd of devils standing behind the two, all glaring at Naruto. So, this is their plan. He thought as he stood from his seat. He knew that someone was against him, but he didn't think that it would come from his girlfriend's parents of all people. Naruto, please understand. Said Lady Stiri, feeling the tension in the atmosphere. We really like you, but you could hold back Seraphal from gaining a position as a great Satan. Seraphal told me that you all preached equality between devils. While they didn't show it, both Citris were surprised at his statement. I know you believe that devil class has some judgment and power, but didn't you just congratulate me in my efforts in the war? So, my question to you, Lady Citri and Lord Citri, is do you consider yourselves as hypocrites or do you suffer from amnesia? The disrespect that Naruto presented was slowly angering the Citris. Yes, they knew the children liked each other, but they weren't thinking about the future. This relationship had to stop and it was going to now. Did you know? know that Seraphal knew about this plan? Asked Lord Citri after sipping some off his wine. Naruto couldn't hide the shock that invaded his face. Seraphal knew of this? That would explain why she's been acting so clingy lately. He presumed. Damn it, he telling the truth. Does that bother you? Asked Lord Citri after a few seconds of silence. He knew he hit a sensitive point, and he wanted to see how Naruto would react. So that's how he wants to play. Thought Naruto. He took a look at the devils behind the Citri who were still glaring at him, and sensed their energy. I sense. Beal, Citri. And a few gremory. Thought Naruto as he planned out his future moves. This was a dangerous position the Citris were putting him in, but they forgot one thing. Naruto was a low-class devil prodigy. You two have a good rest of the night. Said Naruto as he bowed to the Citris. I believe that my girlfriend has finished her speech, and I need to congratulate her. The Citris were surprised as Naruto walked away from them. They planned this out and didn't think that Naruto would react this way. Dear, what just happened? Asked Lady Stiri. Lord Citri sighed and ran his hand through his hair. He had a bad feeling and felt like they just did something wrong. I don't know what just happened. Meanwhile, Naruto was walking through the mass of devils. He was searching for a certain devil in the room, and when he sensed his energy, Naruto made a straight beeline to him. Ajuka Astaroth, creator of the evil peace system, was chatting with a lovely female devil. While Ajuka wasn't one for fame, but it did feel nice to be recognized of his efforts during the war in such an extravagant manner. He was sharing one of his war stories with the devil when he felt a tap on his shoulder. Turning his head around, he was face to face with one Naruto Beal. Naruto. He said as he held out his hand. It's good to see you. Every everything okay with Sarah Fall, or are you coming to me with advice? Naruto chuckled at his statement and gave him a firm handshake. No, no. I didn't come for advice. 
Sarah Fall and I have a strong relationship. However, there is something I need from you. Really now? Well, if you ask then I shall help you with all my power. It was you that helped save my ass during the war when we were cornered by the old Satan faction that time. Said Ajuka. I'm glad you're here to help. Said Naruto. Do you remember that time when I was offered a promotion to become a high-class devil? Why yes. They offered that to you a couple of times during the war, but you pasted up the opportunity. Are you reconsidering it? Asked Ajuka. I am, Naruto took a sip of wen and then smirk, and I need to receive my evil pieces as well. Time skip two months later. Outside Citri Mansion. I had fun tonight, Sarah Fall. We should go back to that restaurant. The food there was great. Said Naruto. We should go back. I had a good time. Sarah Fall said as she hugged Naruto's arm closer to her chest. The two were just coming back from a casual date they had at a simple restaurant. They didn't want to do anything big, but just something small, so they could wear their everyday clothes and also enjoy good food in each other's presence. However, the two were hiding things from each other. Sarah Fall had her situation with her family and the Beals. She should have broken up with Naruto after the war, but two months after and they're still together. She tried to multiple times, but she could never finish it. Either should would freeze up and change the conversation or something around them caught Naruto's attention, Sarah Fall had horrible luck with ending her relationship with the blonde Bale. Maybe I could try to finish it tonight she thought as they approached her front door. Naruto, on the other hand, had his own secrets. He hasn't told Sarah Fall that he knew that she was supposed to break up with him after the war. After learning that, Naruto had a growing anger towards Sarah Sarah Fall for agreeing with such a proposition. If it was him in the same position, he would have chosen her over his image. It irritated him that all of her claims of love for him came second over her position in society. However, she was there for me when I was at my lowest. Thought Naruto when he remembered his parents' death. After coming back to the war with those deaths fresh on his mind, he had how he really felt and focused on the war. But, Sarah Fall being Sarah Fall, felt something wrong with Naruto and continued to ask him what was up when he denied anything wrong. And when he finally told her that his parents died, she was there for him when he was weakest. For the first time in his life, Naruto willingly cried, but he wasn't alone while doing so. I can't just give her up after that. He thought as they turned to face each other. She was now the most important person to him than anyone in the world. Even though he has some extra things hidden from her, it was for his own protection because he's been suspect of a few things during these last few months. I love you, Naruto. Sarah Fall suddenly said. I really mean it. Naruto gave her his cheeky trademark grin, love you too, Sarah Fall. The two gave each other a quick kiss, but before Naruto could pull back, Sarah Fall wrapped her arms behind his head and pulled him in again, mashing their lips together. Naruto was slightly surprised, but he didn't agree with it as he wrapped his arms around her waist. Kissing Seraphal is an experience that feels new to him every time he did it, and he hoped that he could continue to do it with her in the future. The couple pulled back from each other and had to take in a couple deep breaths to get air back in their lungs. That was a move that Seraphal didn't make a lot, which gave Naruto the signal that something was up. Good night, night, Naruto. Get home safe. She said with a kiss to his cheek. After that, she entered her house, closing the door behind her. Naruto stood there for a while before headed back down the stairs and walking home. Of course, he wasn't walking all the way home, but he heard something that was interesting. All right, Citri. Let's see what you have planned. He thought as he left the mansion. Inside the mansion, right behind the door, Sarah Fall broke down in tears. She knew that her father was planning on doing it. She could just feel it. But she had a duty to her clan that she had to keep and Naruto had to come second. I'm, so sorry, Naruto. Sarah Fall said in between her hicks as she cried her eyes out. 
Naruto's House Naruto was approaching his house, and he sensed many powerful devils nearby. Honestly, it made him feel uneasy, because while Naruto was powerful, he knew he couldn't handle all of these high-level devils in the area. Well, looky here. Said Naruto as he looked at his deceased parents' house. There were about 30 devils on his front lawn waiting for him. They were all giving a bad vibe and Naruto knew they were about to handle business. One of the devils with his or her face covered in a mask, stepped up to Naruto. Follow us. He said. The group brought out their devil wings and flew off into the forest. All right then. Muttered Naruto as he too, took off with the group. A short flight later Naruto was surrounded in a clearing in the forest. He was in the middle of a pentagon with seals surrounding him. So what are we doing here? Naruto said with a smirk. He was trying to sell his facade that he wasn't worried, but he was honestly figuring out a plan to beat these jerks. Plus, one of these guys reeked of smoke, smoke, and it was messing with Naruto's nose. The Citri clan doesn't agree with you seeing Seraphal Sama, said their supposed leader, the same devils that stepped up to him earlier. And the Bale clan doesn't like it either. Because the Bale want to offer one of their high-class devils to the Citri to marry Seraphal, if I'm correct. Interrupted Naruto. The silence of the group leader told Naruto everything he needed to hear. The Citri are fools if they think that's going to work. Naruto laughed a little, pissing off a couple of the devils present that were present. Seraphal will become one of the four great Maos, which will cut her ties and obligations with the Citri clan, inevitably. So if you think that you can solve your problems from getting rid of me, you're stupider than I thought. Regardless of what you think, we have a job to get rid of you. The masked leader said. About ten of the thirty devils present circled around certain points of the pentagon and started to chant out a spell. What are they planning to do? This seal isn't a type of seal to deal damage, so what are they trying to do? He thought as he tried to find a way to escape. The chanting from the devils got louder and the seal glowed purple. Whatever they were trying to do, they were close to succeeding and Naruto really needed to get out now. If you haven't noticed by now, your mobility has been hindered. Said the masked leader. Naruto's eyes went wide when he tried to move his legs. He looked down to see purple hands coming from the seal, holding down. Damn it. He shouted as he tried to pull himself free. Now there really wasn't a way. Time for plan B, he thought. It's a shame that Seraphal Sama couldn't see this. The leader said with a bit of arrogance. Her worst mistake being thrown away forever. Naruto, Naruto glared at the man as he silently started to charge his energy. What do you mean by that? He demanded. We were told that you know Seraphal Sama isn't supposed to be with you. Her reluctance caused her father to pull some strings to make sure things ended. Meaning? Asked Naruto as he continued charging his magic. Meaning, the leader reached into his jacket and pulled out a small treasure box, we're going to seal you. Seal, so that's what this is. Muttered Naruto. He should have known and should have prepared better. He was arrogant, believing he could get away with a few tricks and maneuvers, but his success rate was lowering in by the second. When Sarah finds out about this, she'll find me and release me. Naruto said confidently. He knew Seraphal was supposed to call it quits with him a while back, and he remembered times when she tried to but couldn't quite say it, but he knew she wouldn't agree with something like this. Oh, you must not know. Said the leader with a slight chuckle. Seraphal Sama knew about this. Naruto's eyes widened as he felt his heart drop. She knew? That's impossible. She wouldn't agree to something like this. T this. This isn't like her. You should have seen the signals. Said the leader as he leaned his back on a tree. I've watched you for a couple of weeks and even I could see Seraphal Sama's reluctance and hesitation in telling you. However, you've known Seraphal Sama for years. 
you should have suspected that this would happen. I, I, I suspected something, muttered a defeated Naruto, but I wasn't suspect something this major. Naruto was trying his hardest to hold back his tears. Everything that he went through with Seraphall, and this is how she would end things. By sealing him up and throwing him away like trash? This is how she does him after all this time. Small droplets of tears crept from his eyes as he shook in sadness. Why, why would she agree to this? Because she loves her duty to the Citri clan more than she loves you. Stated the masked leader plainly. I mean, it's been drilled into her head since birth that her clan comes first. You have to think, she had to have been in a physiological battle with herself in deciding which one was the most important to her, you or her duty. Well, she's not here to stop us, so you know which one she picked. Tears freely fell from his face as he let his emotions be known. It was another instance, just like his mother, when somebody chose something over him. He never did anything wrong. He was just trying to protect his home and fell in love along the way. Why did it have to be like this? The masked leader saw Naruto's tears and sighed. He walked up to the boy and put a hand on his shoulder. Listen, I don't want to really do this, unlike some of the devils here, but this is just how it goes. I had to fight my way up to become a high-class devil because I have a family. I want my daughter to live a life that I didn't get the chance to live because I was born a low-class devil, just like you. Naruto closed his eyes and tilted his head down to the ground. He didn't want to hear that bullshit. He was about to be locked for Lucifer knows how long, just for falling in love. Why not just kill me? He asked. The Beal wanted to teach you a lesson in messing with having a relationship with someone out of your class, especially someone like Seraphal Sama. The masked man waited for Naruto to say something, but after waiting a while, he sighed and started to walk out of the Pentagon. Nice to see you again, Asuma-sensei. The masked man stopped in his tracks and looked back at Naruto, who was trying to glare a hole into him. Sighing for what seemed like the tenth time, the masked leader walked away from Naruto and into the forest. Finish the this up. Seal him. The chants were rising in volume and the purple pentagon was flashing. The glowing hands traveled up his body, but he didn't do anything to stop it. There was only one thing he could do, but it wouldn't free him. The chanting stopped and the hand were now around his throat. They weren't choking him, but instead, holding him to where he couldn't even move his neck. The devils raised their arms towards the sky and then towards the small treasure box that was left open in front of Naruto. Seal. The devils shouted as the hands started to pull Naruto in. I'll be back. Naruto thought as he opened up his mouth to reveal a red ball of destruction. Red bolts of destruction shot out the ball and into three of the devils' heads, obliterating them to a molecular level. We lost three of us shouted a devil as they tried to force Naruto into the box with all their might. We have to continue, even if the seal is weaker. Shouted another. With the combined efforts of the remaining devils, Naruto was slowly pulled into the treasure box, and it was closed on top of him. This won't stop me. Those words reverberated throughout the area. The pentagon slowly faded away, and one of the devils picked up the treasure box to put in hiding. That's it for this reading. Hit like and subscribe for a free ticket pass going to the different worlds of anime fanfictions. Looking forward to having you on board again.